Um, a quick update on Beirut. Last show, you know, we did uh, in the hours after the big Beirut bombing and uh, a bombing explosion. And uh, <clears throat> some of the information wasn't as clear then, although most of what I th said, I think, has turned out to be true. It was indeed an accident. It was not a, uh, a an attack. Although, although, if if you watch Twitter and if you follow kind of some of the Middle East stuff, uh, or, or, or um, you email twice. All right, email to Iran at IranBrooksShow dot com. Just a regular email. I'm not sure where the through the website goes. Who knows where it goes? I I, I think it probably goes to. My assistant, but I haven't. I don't get those emails, and I don't know how often she checks for them. So, um, just use your on at your on bookshow.com regular email. I'll get it immediately. All right. <clears throat> so um, it turns out that the explosion was ammonium nitrate, which is used, which is a substance uh, used both for fertilizer and for explosives. Derek said, make sure to use that way. I don't know what Derek said. Just do what I say. Right? I think that generally is, I, oh, I, you know, I'm more senior than Derek, so. All right. <laughs> Ammonium nitrate, which is, a, um, which is a fertilizer, an explosive, on a Russian ship, came out of Georgia, didn't know JoJo was a big manufacturer of ammonium nitrate. I haven't had, I, I couldn't find any info about why Georgia, why you would be shipping out of Georgia. Anyway, Georgia on the Black Sea, uh, went through the Black Sea on the way to Mozambique, supposedly to a, a mining company in Mozambique was supposed to get this, right? And... Derek is claiming I outrank him when it comes to the you on book show. Derek, I think I outrank you when it comes to pretty much everything. <laughs> um, except Derek's own life, which I do not outrank him in. Um, anyway, the ship leaves Georgia on the way to Mozambique. So it goes through um, the Straits in Turkey, down into the Mediterranean, via Greece, stops in Athens. It's carrying... 2,750 tons of ammonium nitrate. It's supposed to go through the Suez Canal, down the coast of Africa, and unload in Mozambique. Mozambique is an island off the coast of Africa. And the sailors are getting nervous. There is 2,750 tons of ammonium nitrate. They are basically sitting on a massive bomb. You saw the bomb go off yesterday. You saw the video these sailors were justifiably nervous. Now, exactly why this was being shipped to Mozambique, exactly why they chose to go to Beirut, exactly why Beirut, the port in Beirut, accepted the ship in, all of that is still a mystery. And who knows if we will ever know any of that. But they sail into Beirut, and then there's a huge legal battle ensues. The sailors want to get paid. They want to get out of, get out of there. The shipping company doesn't want to pay them. Um, the boat just sits there for years. Ultimately, and nobody knows why, and nobody knows who did this, the boat gets unloaded. 2,750 tons of ammonium white nitrate get put into a warehouse. The ship is, sinks off the coast, I guess, of Lebanon. Who knows where the sailors are? I have no idea what happened to sailors. The whole thing is weird, weird, weird. Anyway, throughout all this, people are complaining to the government in Lebanon. You know, we've got 2,750 tons of ammonia nitrate here, flammable, explosive. What, 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 why is it here? Nobody does anything. Nobody thinks they have jurisdiction. Typical bureaucracy. If you see Chernobyl, it wasn't me. It's not my responsibility. I didn't do it. I don't know. It was somebody else. Ammonium nitrate. Oh, that's... That's benign. It, nothing will happen. Every bureaucrat passes on to somebody else. So you're right. It was to Mozambique, not to Madagascar. So it, Mozambique is not an island. It is a country. 
still down the Suez Canal, down the coast of Africa to Mozambique. Um, and, you know, complete political bureaucratic nothing. Um, when the stuff is in the warehouse, the custom officers write to a judge, they write to the Justice Department, they write to every department in Lebanese government. Everybody passes the buck. Nobody wants to take responsibility until the thing goes off. And, you know, we, we have at least 100 people dead, several thousand people injured. Who knows how bad the injuries are? Uh, who knows how many people are really dead because they haven't even started picking out the, bo the, the bodies from the ruins, or they've started, but it's going to be a while. Um, massive explosion, leveled buildings. I mean, just if you've seen the video, I mean, it was really scary stuff, scary video. Um, and, you know, people compared it to a nuclear bomb. Now, let me just say, once we get into the numbers of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, you'll see where this is nothing like a nuclear bomb. They're lucky it wasn't a nuclear bomb. Of course, everywhere online, Israel is being accused of doing this. Uh, everywhere online, from Twitter, Facebook, and, and a variety of different other sources in the Middle East, um, this is an Israeli operation. To do what exactly? It's unclear. Destabilize Lebanon. Lebanon was already being destabilized. What I do find encouraging, if you will, from this, from this very dark day for Lebanon, I mean, it's really sad, is that people now out in the streets calling for a revolution, not just a changing government, not just justice, but for a revolution. They've had enough. The country's bankrupt. People are starving. People are poor. There are no jobs, and now people are dead, maimed, dying in hospitals. 300,000 homeless. And now people, I think, are waking up to the fact that the government is corrupt through and through, that the consequence of that corruption are not just a few billions of dollars or tens of billions of dollars or hundreds of billions of dollars stolen in Swiss bank accounts or used to buy weaponry for Hezbollah, they now realize that that corruption, it leads directly to the deaths of hundreds, the, 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 the injury to thousands, and the destruction of a city. That corruption is systemic, it's throughout, it goes from the president to the prime minister, to the, to the parliament, and to the political elites, throughout the country. I mean, corruption kills, and corruption just killed hundreds of people, would be my guess. And there's real calls. Macron, the uh, president of France, is in Lebanon. Lebanon has a very close ties to France, has had for, for a long, long time, particularly the Christians in, uh, in Lebanon. And uh, the French president is there. He is claiming that while they will be providing humanitarian assistance, it's not going to be a blank check. Let's hope he's right. I don't believe him, really, uh, because any check will go to Hezbollah rather than actually fixing things. And what are they going to do? They're going to replace this prime minister with another prime minister, this president with another president. They need a complete overhaul of their system of government. They need to get away from the sectarian nature of their system. They need to get away from the tribalism and the, uh, uh, you know, the adoration of violence. They need to get away from killing each other, arming themselves to the teeth, to actually rebuilding the old Lebanon, rebuilding a secular society, rebuilding a free society, rebuilding the Paris and Switzerland of the Middle East. And to do that, they have to get rid of their entire political elite. All of them need to get out, replace all the bastards, <clears throat> and replace it with a constitutional system that protects the rights of individual Lebanese. Now, I know all of that is wishful thinking, and if we're going to get rid of political elites, how about the United States? That would be a good idea. But let's start, you know, Lebanon is in worse state. It's worse than Lebanon right now. So that would be my wish for the Lebanese, and uh, I think that any humanitarian assistant goes there should be contingent on real change, 
not cosmetic change, real change. Now, unfortunately, I think the United States is going to send a lot of money, and France is going to send a lot of money, and the European Union will send a lot of money, and the Saudis will send a lot of money, and most of that money will land up in the hands of the existing elites. Most of that money will be siphoned off to who knows where. Most of that money will feed more and more and more and more corruption and decay and destruction. I'm not optimistic, but, you know, maybe, maybe the people have woken up. Maybe the people will not allow it to happen again. Maybe the people will make a real change in Lebanon for the better. Instead of going to war with Israel, they could learn something from Israel. Maybe establish a free, non-sectarian, you know, Israel's a little too sectarian for my liking, but, okay, so a free society that actually embraces some of the uh, principles of free markets. And who asked, why is France involved? Uh, France has a long relationship going back, I, I mentioned this the other day, to the 19th century with the, Le the Lebanese, primarily Lebanese Christians. Lebanese Christians used to be a much greater percentage of the population than they are today. They used to be almost 50% of the population, They're down to under 40, I think. Um, the Christians viewed France, they had a good relationship with France and the Vatican, I think all the way back to, to when Napoleon, uh, in the days of Napoleon, and then of course, when the Ottoman Empire was defeated, France was responsible for Lebanon, so um, France occupied Lebanon for many years, it set up, France is the one that set up its, its, its democratic system, its parliament, its president, its sectarian system, France is responsible to a large extent for the mess that exists there because instead of fighting and annihilating the tribalism, it embraced that tribalism and supported that tribalism uh, and institutionalized, worse than all, it institutionalized the tribalism. So France established modern Lebanon. I mean, Lebanon, there is no such thing as Lebanon or Syria or Iraq, or, I mean, these are all countries created out of the aftermath of the fall of the Ottoman Empire when uh, a Frenchman and a Brit guy sat down with a map and, and a ruler and some pencils and drew lines in the, in the sand, lines on a piece of paper that translated into lines in the sand, and created borders that created the modern Middle East. There is no Lebanon as a country, Syria as a country. Indeed, if there is a country, it's Syria, which used to control both Lebanon most of Jordan and what is Israel today. That was great to Syria. But <clears throat> there are no... Oops, Siri thinks I'm talking to her. There are no borders that go back beyond what the Brits and the French decided after World War I. <clears throat> so Lebanon is, is a creation of the French. And the entire political system in Lebanon is a creation of the French. And when the French left, they kept, obviously, some strong connections with the Lebanese, particularly the Lebanese Christians. So I, I wish the Lebanese well. I hope uh, for a revolution. By the way, I think that I was the first to call for a Lebanese revolution two days ago. Maybe somebody in Lebanon was listening to your own book show and said, yes, it's time for a revolution and word spread. And now they're out in the street calling for a revolution. Uh, Sykes-Picot agreement, that was the agreement between France and Britain, and it's named after Sykes, who was the Brit, and Picot, who was the Frenchman, who drew the lines, drew the lines in the sand that created the modern Middle East and created uh, what is today Lebanon. Um, all right, so that is, um, that is where we are as new, exciting, fun information trickles in fun or not so fun or depressing information trickles in about Lebanon, I'll keep you updated as I have with TikTok. No new information on TikTok, so I'm not going to mention TikTok today. Um, the future runs through the Iran Book Show. Yes, we are. We are determining the future on this show. At least that is my hope. So that is Lebanon. There's still a lot of stuff we don't know about the shipment. There's still a lot of weird stuff going on there. Um, but I think, I don't think there's anything 
conspiratorial. Just a lot of incompetence. And, you know, maybe there's some reason why they stopped in Beirut and this was unloaded. Maybe the Hezbollah wanted this stuff. Maybe somebody else wanted this stuff to make bombs. We don't know. We might never know. We might never know. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brute. All right, before we go on, reminder, please like the show. We, we've got 163 live listeners right now, uh, 30 likes. That should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. But, but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want to see, see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to 100. It, all it takes is a click of a, a, click of a, a thing, whether you're looking at this uh, and, and, you know, the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. It's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something, the more the algorithm likes it. So, you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes. But uh, if you like it, don't just sit there. Help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share and uh, you can support the show at yourrunbookshow.com slash support or on Patreon or Subscribestar or Locals uh, and, uh, and show your support for, all, for, for, for the work, for the value hopefully you're receiving from this. And, uh, and of course, don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, even if, you, even if you just come here to troll or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx, uh, then uh, you should subscribe because that way you'll know when to show up. You'll know what shows are on, when they're on. You'll get notified, right? So, um, yes, like, share, subscribe, support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please. <laughs>